Let's bring in Jason Trenner, Chairman and CEO of Strategus Research Partners. Uh, that is a Baird company. A lot of people, Jason, say that we don't need rate cuts because earnings are, are validating current valuations. Well, it depends on how you're looking at, the, at, at earnings. If you look at the mag, we looked at this this weekend. If you look at the mag seven earnings for the mag seven in the first in the fourth quarter were up 59 percent, roughly. For the S and P 493, they're actually down uh, by about three percent. So, the the way the index is constructed, the market doesn't look that expensive because the. The, those big companies are providing big earnings growth, but it's not evenly distributed. And so, in my opinion, for the entire market, um, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have a rate cut or two, uh, but um, certainly it doesn't seem to need it right now. So you didn't have any Doritos and noticed that the bag was only half filled? Oh, we, yeah, no, that was, I think we it was... We need rates to go higher to get rid of this that was really, Yeah, that was a really positive message on a secular holiday you know, from the president, you know, maybe something a little more upbeat. You, you wouldn't know? worry if they cut, if that, that it's too soon with, given I, the I think GDP enough, and given the, the, the labor? I, I, I'm, I'm just being pragmatic, which is to say that um, Jay Powell has essentially promised people that they're going to cut largely, and they're going to cut as a result. Um, I don't think there's any rush, uh, and I think when our work has shown that once you have one wave of inflation over 6 percent over the last 120 years, the, the chances of getting another wave over 6 percent are about 9 and 10. It, and that's because of the way contracts are written, that's the way wages work. And so I, I wouldn't be in a big rush to, to cut personally, but I think they're going to cut this year. Can can government spending and government employment and, and fiscal spending and the Fed, can Keynesian economics work? I mean, that's, is that what you attribute this economy to right now? Because it, I do. Biden really hasn't done a pro I don't know. Republicans think pro growth is, is supply side. Supply side. Stuff. Yeah. There's been it none is. of that. Yeah. There's just been a lot of. We're, listen, Joe, we're running a budget deficit of 7% of GDP right now. We've only done that three other times since World War II. Uh, and those times we were deep in recession and, and the unemployment rate was above seven. Running a budget deficit this large at full employment is unheard of. It's crazy. Well, Trump did it too, though, right? Well, n nothing to this extent, not nowhere near 7% of GDP. And I'm not saying we didn't spend, we didn't spend a lot of money. It's, it's a bipartisan issue. The, 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 the problem is without the Fed being a, the buyer of last resort for treasuries, long-term interest rates are going to head higher. So, but maybe that's the plan, maybe that, but the, the, the thing is you can't control everything. If the Fed is going to do that, you're going to have a persistent inflation problem because, um, as we know, inflation is too much money chasing too, too many, too few goods. So the yield curve will correct itself, but it's going to be on the long end. So we're, where we go, we're the 10 years going back above 5%? It all depends on whether the Fed monetizes the debt again, okay? Uh, the Fed's balance sheet, as you know, is a little less than 8 trillion dollars. It was $800 billion before Bear Stearns failed. It grew at about 6% a year for decades, and has grew at 17% a year since the global financial crisis. So the Fed is working hand in glove with the administration or the Treasury Department to try to keep interest rates low and spend money we don't have. But it's dangerous, and it's, it's very apparent, I think, in my own opinion, in the president's own approval ratings as far as the economy is concerned. If you, if you have an unemployment rate of 3.7 percent, a stock market at all-time highs, uh, right. inflation coming down, um, I, you could see why the administration would feel a little upset about the fact that their approval ratings weren't right. as good as they are. But it's because inflation is still a nagging problem for your average person. It's not, they are not seeing the benefits and their wages are late to catching up. Uh, to the inflation well, that's in the system. Can, the, the market is supposed to be really smart, the stock market. Yeah. How long does it continue to ignore some of these nagging questions <laughs> that, that you're talking about? Listen, I th I'm finding with a lot of our clients right now, the reason why they're getting bullish is they've figured that it's, a, it's moral hazard. They figured it out. They figured out that uh, anytime there's a problem, there'll be some, somebody that comes to the rescue. Silicon Valley Bank failed March early last year. Market was flat year to date at that point. It was only early March. Fed floods the system with $400 billion uh, in, on its balance sheet. You get towards the end of the year last year, market starts to 
get a hit in late October, gets yeah, down yeah. to 4,100. Uh, Janet Yellen suspends coupon issuance. Long-term interest rates go from five to 380. So I would just say it looks like the fix is in. If you know, it's, it's why it's very hard to short stocks in this environment. But even that kind of stuff should come home to roost. In Eventually, real- and it'll come home to roost in inflation. But it's perfect for inflation is perfect for politicians because it's slow moving. Your fingerprints aren't all over it. It, it, it's almost the perfect solution uh, to whatever ails you from a fiscal health point of view. It's always been the case, though. It's, it's, always, always, it's sort of a Ray Dalio view of the world. Yeah, I mean, right? You mod- just inflate your way out of everything. Yeah, it's, you know, modern monetary That's theory a different is, kind of tax is yeah. not modern. I mean, it's as old as humanity, well, right? It, it, we still, I guess, we had the financial crisis, but we still have never had a, a day of reckoning for all the debt that we. No, there, it, it will. It, it's going to come in some way. It'll either, in my opinion, it'll either come in the form of higher long-term interest rates, uh, or if the Fed monetizes the debt again, it'll come in the form of a, a weaker dollar. And a weaker dollar, not necessarily versus other fiat currencies, but a weaker dollar in the things that we buy every day. Or, may, or there may be like three chips in a Dorito bag. I mean, like, <laughs> that could be the shrinkflation, right? Exactly. That's how it could mean really, literally yeah. three. Where if you have a family of four, you're gonna have to share. Yeah, you might have to break one. You have to support one of, the, and you can't. It's hard to to break one of those in half. You, so you still say the Mag Seven, huh? But I thought we're down to. Fancy four. Oh, yeah, no, sensational six or uh, unless sexy it, six. The, the, the sexy six. I mean, there's really, uh, on the Mag 7, I mean, there's only three really pure plays on artificial intelligence. It's Google, it's, it's Microsoft, it, it's NVIDIA. Okay. But still, those companies, with the exception of Tesla, they're all growing like a weed, right? And so um, it's hard to fade that. The, the, what we call the PEG ratio, the PE to growth ratio for the MAG-7 is actually significantly lower so than the market. I noticed you-